he asked me to go to the general manager and also apologize to the general manager. And I said, oh my God. So does the entire hotel management know, know about this incident? And it appeared to be yes. And it was so embarrassing for me. So embarrassing. The funny thing is, you know, when I get introduced to other people or I do interviews, which uh, I, I've done many of them, of course, over the course of my career, then almost everybody asks me, hey, chef, what is your favorite dish? But nobody barely asks me, hey, chef, what is actually your favorite lesson? Uh, your favorite lesson you have learned uh, during your career. Good afternoon, Chef Marcel. We, Ranganathan Yadunath and Chef Ravichandar Reddy from the Department of Hospitality Management, Garden City University, welcome you to the webinar session. I also welcome all the students and participants of who are a part of this webinar. Uh, in the next few minutes, uh, Chef Marcel uh, would be taking us through his culinary journey, and he would be talking about his learnings in uh, cooking and traveling. Uh, we would look at a brief introduction of uh, Chef Marcel Dreamer. So Chef Marcel Dreamer is an award-winning chef and aspiring author and creative e-learning mentor. He has traveled around 11 countries in four continents and has two award-winning restaurants. Uh, he was born in Germany and has learned the art of cooking from Germany and started the profession at around 16 years and has traveled ever since uh, around the world. So he's traveled to cities like Hong Kong, Zurich, Kuala Lumpur, and uh, San Diego, Jakarta, Beijing, and many other places around the globe. Chef Marcel was a part of the world-class team at the international luxury hotels and resorts, such as Marriott, International Hyatt Hotels Corporation, and Accor. He was leading large teams of up to 120 cooks and chefs. So that was a small introduction about Chef Marcel. And Chef Marcel, over to you, uh, please. Okay, first of all, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to, to speak today, to give a small, uh, uh, short lecture about my um, uh, traveling and cooking. And uh, yeah, thank you very much again for this. It's a great opportunity for me also to spread the word uh, about uh, and make uh, advertisement for the hospitality business, for the chefs and all the other people who are actually working in the industry because it's a great industry. The topic I want to uh, talk to, uh, uh, to you about today is, uh, yeah, my, my lessons I have learned, my three most important lessons I have learned uh, while traveling and cooking the world. And uh, the funny thing is, you know, when I get introduced to other people or I do interviews, which uh, I, I've done many of them, of course, over the course of my career, then almost everybody asks me, hey, chef, what is your favorite dish? Yeah. And I mean, I think this is a legitimate question. Yeah. Um, people want to know what's my favorite dish. There's nothing wrong with that question. And, but nobody barely asks me, hey, chef, what is actually your favorite lesson? Uh, your favorite lesson you have learned uh, during your career. And like I said, today, I'm going to give you my three most valuable lessons I have learned. And here they are. Lesson number one is uh, don't be afraid to meet strangers. Um, when I was 16 years old, I started my apprenticeship in Germany as a very young and inexperienced trainee. And I finished it successfully after three years. And uh, during that time, it never crossed the thought, never crossed my mind to actually leave Germany. I didn't want to leave Germany. I was happy here in my hometown, Berlin. I had a job. I earned some money. And I had all my friends here. So everything was good. I started to look for a flat, an apartment, and, and, and things like that. So I was really happy. But then destiny struck, and I suddenly got fired from my job. I was 19 years old, very young. Actually, I was 21, and uh, it was a big shock to me. Yeah? Suddenly, uh, you get fired, you know, out of the blue. And 
I didn't know what to do. And now I had all my friends here, you know, and um, I had a colleague at the time who worked in Switzerland before, and he always told me, Marcel, you have to go to Switzerland and it's so nice over there. You can earn good money and, and uh, you have a great life and things like that. And I never listened to him because I never was interested to, to leave Germany at all, you know. But then I seriously started to consider thinking, uh, thinking to consider. And, and uh, yeah, I sent an application letter out and applied for a hotel in Switzerland. And it was my first time that I reached out to a foreign country. Even Switzerland is a neighboring state, but it is still a foreign country. And I was surprised about myself that I wasn't shy to uh, do that, you know. And I went over there and I had an interview. Uh, they wanted to see me in person and everything was great. You know, there were a lot of German, people, German chefs also working there. So I felt very comfortable. And eventually I decided to move to Switzerland. And um, once I arrived here, there, the first few months, I have to admit, I was kind of a little bit of homesick. You know, I missed my family and friends. But over the course of the next uh, 18 months, uh, things changed completely. Um, and that made this experience in Switzerland uh, uh, was a, a, a huge, uh, left a huge impression on me, uh, especially the fact that it was a multicultural team, not only Germans, not only Swiss people, our team consisted of many different nationalities from South Africa, from South America, from, I remember people from Scotland, from Asia, also from India, from uh, Sri Lanka also. So it was a multicultural team in the truest sense. And that really um, impressed me. I also improved my English language, which I barely spoke at the time. Even we used to learn it in school, but we have never had a uh, chance to practice. So that made a big impact on me. And uh, since, uh, since that experience in Switzerland, I knew I wanted to travel the world for the rest of my life. Uh, I was so impressed with the whole experience. And um, yeah, so that was the first big experience, the first Kona Stone. And that made me actually move from, from that point on. I traveled many different countries. And uh, I went to America and, 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 and New Zealand, and uh, I spent time in Southeast Asia. Many years later, I um, reached a, a, a similar point where I had the opportunity to go to Saudi Arabia. Somebody offered me a job in Saudi Arabia. Well, Saudi Arabia uh, is a country uh, which is not very popular, uh, unfortunately, uh, I must say. Uh, it is also not very popular in, the, in our business, in the hospitality industry, uh, because, um, yeah, it is a Muslim country, and for several reasons, many uh, expat, expatriates don't like to work there. So they have their own personal reasons. So I was again confronted with a very challenging decision. Should I move to Saudi Arabia? Yes or no? But what I also learned over the course of the years is that I always listen to my own um, gut feeling and my heart and not so much what other people said. So I, the decision to move to Saudi Arabia was not a difficult one because I was already like conditioned to look for uh, new challenges because in my profession, this is, if you want to make career and if you want to make career fast, then you, you have to travel and you have to gain as much experience as you can. So I took the opportunity, I moved to Saudi Arabia. I never been there and just heard all these stories, you know? And um, I was not afraid of strangers. I was not afraid of Saudi Arabian, Saudi Arabian people. As a matter of fact, it turned out that, there, that these Saudi people were one of the most uh, polite people I have ever met. They were so accommodating to me and I made so many things happen. I remember, for example, visiting a mobile phone shop in Saudi Arabia and I wanted to buy a mobile phone and I didn't know the procedure and, uh, and all these kind of things. And there was a, another Saudi guy um, uh, doing some business there, uh, also purchasing something for his phone. And then uh, he noticed me and he asked me, where are, you, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Germany. And suddenly he became very happy and he even paid my uh, first uh, SIM card. Uh, that's really true. And so, I had a, had a good experience in Saudi Arabia. So again, this proved that uh, 
since I was not afraid of strangers or even not afraid of traveling, it really paid off. Um, the second um, lesson I have learned is a very profound lesson. It is uh, to respect strangers. I mean, now some of you might think, uh, what's special about respect? Shouldn't we respect each other anyway all the time? In theory, yes, but in, uh, in the practical world, it was a little bit different, at least with me. See, when I was a young and aspiring chef around, let's say, 30 years old, I was very motivated. I traveled already uh, through a few countries. I made career, which was very good for me also. But uh, I think my ego was a little bit suffering of that. You know, I was really... I start to become a little bit arrogant and I really thought, you know, I, I know it all and I am kind of uh, a very experienced chef, which I was, but, you know, it, it all um, went up my head and uh, it, uh, my attitude changed, you know. Uh, I want to share the story when I worked in Malaysia many years ago and I just assumed a new role, uh, the role of the assistant head chef, which was a new challenge for me. This is what I wanted. Yeah, a big new role, a big new challenge, first time in this role. This was a big hotel with uh, 500 rooms and uh, 11 restaurants. So that was a big challenge, you know, but I wanted it. But I also, I felt confident, of course, to do the job, but I also was arrogant, you know. And I remember one time when I was on an off day. So I thought I wanted to go to the city. Our hotel was uh, 30 kilometers away from the city. So there was no bus, no public transportation. So I called the front office of the hotel and asked if they could kindly send me or call me a taxi because I wanted to go to the city. So the taxi somehow after 15 or 20 minutes never appeared. So I got a little bit impatient and I called the front office again and they said, yeah, the tax is on the way. Okay, fine. And then I waited another 10 or 15 minutes and then I really kind of lost it. I called the front office again and really I lost my temper and uh, really uh, uh, used foul language and everything. And um, yeah, uh, and, and eventually the taxi came and brought me to the city. So what happened is the next morning, when I came to work, the first thing what happened is that my boss, the executive chef, uh, called me into his office. He said, Marcel, uh, please, uh, do we have five minutes? Uh, I need to talk to you. And uh, that sounded already a little bit weird, you know, and I thought, oh, oh, my God, what's going on? What's the matter? And he closed the door. We sat down. And then actually he exactly told me the same story i just told you what actually happened uh, uh, the evening before and uh, you know how i shouted and uh, disrespected the, the uh, disrespected the people and then he told me something which i never forgot um, since that moment he said he said something very obvious but at the time you know i was a little bit younger i was my ego was uh, pumped up you know i thought i'm a, some, some somebody special you know and he told me, Marcel, please do not forget one thing. While you're in Malaysia, you are still a guest. And when he said that, it made click. It is so obvious, I know, but I think this was the conversation I also needed. And he was right. I was a guest in this country just because I'm from Germany and I have a good degree and I have some uh, experience doesn't make me a special person. You know, and this is something I had to learn really the hard way. And the best thing was after the chef finished the conversation, he asked me to go to the general manager and also apologize to the general manager. And I said, oh, my God. So does the entire hotel management know, know about this incident? And it appeared to be yes. And it was so embarrassing for me. So embarrassing. And I went to the GM, to the general manager, and I apologized, you know, and he also said, okay, never mind, Marcel, let's forget this, let's forget this incident, but I think you learned your lesson. And this is um, the lesson I have learned to the hard way to respect people, 
yeah, to respect the people. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not so obvious, you know. I think many of you can uh, uh, can relate to to these uh, situations, you know. A little trick what I have learned also during my career to gain respect um, or to yeah to uh, yeah to kind of um, gain the respect of my co-workers is to learn their language you know so when i spend time in malaysia i learn some malaysian language when i spend time in the philippines i learned some uh, tagalog some uh, philippine language you know that was always very effective uh, to to gain my stuff respect you know because they saw oh my god this guy is really put in put is putting an effort into learning our language you know, even I couldn't never speak fluently, but that was not the point. The point was to show them that I took an effort to learn a little bit of their language and to converse also from time to time. And they also knew, of course, you know, ah, the chef, be careful. He speaks a little bit of our language, so we have to be careful what we are saying, you know. Uh, you know how it is. If you don't speak the language, uh, you know, some other people, they know about it and they, they talk bad behind your back and things like that. So, but, you know... Putting in the effort, uh, I think uh, I earned I earned their respect. That's what I want to want to share here. So earning earning people's respect. I think you have. It's all about earning respect. It's not like what I thought in the beginning. You pop up somewhere and show your degree, and you think you are going to be respected right away. No, no, no. That's not the way it goes. This is not how the world works. Uh, my lesson I learned the hard way is really you have to earn the respect you want yeah. lesson number three is uh, don't uh, uh, please get in touch with strangers don't uh, just um, travel to another country and spend your uh, time in the hotel or in the hotel resort at the pool i mean you can do that you know i mean it's a difference if you travel as a tourist or as me like if you sign contracts uh, for one or two years and you actually live there i know many expatriates who actually signed contracts and they worked in foreign countries but they just um, cared about their work well, there's nothing wrong with that but they never they really missed the chance to mingle with the local people you know which i always did i recognized that early from the beginning if i really want to um, learn something about, about uh, these people the local people and their culture then i need to mingle with them and that also means that uh, to accept invitations because I received, for example, many invitations from my staff to visit their home, to visit their family. In the beginning, I was a little bit shy to do that, you know, but uh, over the months and years, I learned to actually uh, accept these invitations because in other cultures, um, it is very, very important that uh, you uh, understand this. If you are being invited, uh, that is something uh, very meaningful to these people in my culture you know from german and the european culture this is not so uh, so um, so serious you know if i invite somebody if i invite you guys over to my home and you would say no chef i am busy i don't have time it's not a big deal you know but i know in other cultures it is a big deal i learned that and i accepted invitations and this is also a great way to yeah like i say to learn about their their customs, their habits, and also about their values, you know. Um, I kiddingly always say five years working in a foreign country, sorry, one year working in a foreign country is like five years university. So as I now speak, uh, as I'm now speaking to uh, university students, so it's not that I have anything against universities. I think you know where I'm coming from, right? But uh, the one thing is the theory and uh, the one, the other side is the really the practical experience. And um, this is my point here. So uh, that's why I always say uh, one year living abroad is like five years university. And that's why I recommend to, to everybody, if you have the chance to travel and uh, it's not about just seeing nice beaches and um, the Eiffel Tower or uh, you know but um, for me traveling always um, was much more it was all about of course cooking learning about new ingredients learning about the cuisine 
but also learning about the people and the culture and all the, the things I talked about already. A few years ago, one of my ex-colleagues invited me to the Philippines and to stay in Zamboanga province. Uh, it's uh, in the southern part of the Philippines. And uh, I was very, uh, um, I was happy to receive the invitation and I, I, I followed up on the invitation and uh, he invited me to stay a few days in his home with his uh, parents and with his siblings and everything. And I never done this before. I mean, I visited other people's houses for a dinner or for a lunch and had a chit chat with the family and get to know the family and everything, but I never really spent few days in a row in a, in a stranger's house, you know, um, in a different country, in a different province. Uh, that was exciting to me. That was also, uh, I wasn't shy, but I was, I was not really afraid also, but I was excited, you know. And man, did I learn what, I learned so many things during these four days I stayed there, you know, how the family lives, uh, how they cook, how their how their daily life looks like, you know, I, because I was fully integrated into the family. That that was a nice thing. The family from the first day fully integrated me. And where can you get something like this? You can, you will never get this when you just stay in your hotel and and, and, and going for your uh, dinner buffet or you're visiting the pool. Yeah, you you, you will miss all these great experiences. And. Uh, you know, uh, then the uh, uh, his daddy, my 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 friend's daddy, for example, he explained me the shower room. You know, and uh, yeah, he he told me, oh, this Marcel, look, this is our shower here. If you want to take a shower, please go ahead. And uh, there was a, a shower head installed and everything, but it was broken. So then he explained me uh, how Filipino people take a shower in the Philippines. And then he he, he pointed to some bucket uh, uh, which was. Uh, uh, resting on the floor, a bucket full of water, and then uh, that was the way Filipino take a shower. You know, they have to uh, take a, a big cup of water, and then they put the water over their head. And I was not used to that. You know, in my in, in Western cultures, you have showers everywhere, and especially warm water. You know, Western people they love to take a shower with warm water. And then in the Philippines, there was no warm water. There was not even a shower. You know, when I think of this today, I'm just, I, I'm smiling. I'm even laughing because it's so funny. But at the time I was thinking, oh my God, what I'm, you know, what am I doing here? What is this all about? But these are the experiences I'm, I'm talking about. And if you are afraid to get in touch with strangers, then you will never make these experiences. Uh, so uh, these are my three lessons I have learned. Don't be afraid to meet uh, strangers. Don't um, be afraid to get in touch with them. And uh, first and foremost, respect strangers. So this is also how I want to conclude Yeah, what I mentioned already just before. Uh, traveling should be your number one subject in the university of life, I call it the university of life. Traveling is very important. Why is it important? Because you grow your personality, you learn, you expand your horizon, you gain new perspectives, which is very important. If you want, want to understand the world and if you want to grow, you need to be able to gain new and different perspectives. Traveling is very good to open your mind and if you have an open mind already then congratulations then you even should increase your traveling because traveling will keep your mind open yeah and you will develop a bird's eye view uh, to uh, many different things and of course you will meet new people it's all about the people it's all about the connections you know it's not only about digital networking which is very important these days anyway but for me um even i'm digitally digitally very well connected also now through this talk you know thanks to the technology but for me analog connections are at least if not even more important you know physical connections and through my traveling yeah so through this traveling you, you will just benefit, you know, 
And I became a completely different person, you know, uh, working and living among these uh, different cultures and people. It also shaped my mind, my worldview, my habits, my values, and my customs certainly also have, have changed to a positive. Since I absorbed so many things. I feel like a sponge absorbing so many different influences and knowledge. And this is why I recommend to everybody to travel uh, if you have the, uh, the opportunity and be open-minded and not afraid to travel. Yeah, please don't be afraid because you will at the end only benefit. And this traveling also led me to uh, Hong Kong, for example, where I met Thomas. Thomas uh, came from India and uh, many years ago and uh, lived in Hong Kong already for, for many, many years. And the other day I was sorting through my pictures in my archives here. Uh, and I saw this picture, I found this picture uh, of me and Thomas. And I visited Thomas a few years ago in Hong Kong. And we took a picture and I kept this picture. And uh, just the other day, a few days ago, I uh, posted this picture on LinkedIn, the uh, big website. And it was, it is still amazing to see how many support I get, especially from Indian people. So I also want to take this opportunity here since I talk to uh, uh, Indian University to uh, thank everybody for their great support, for support, su for supporting this post. It is sheer uh, incredible how much people uh, viewed this um, uh, post and also commented and liked it. And uh, that only can uh, happening when you travel. When you travel, you meet new people and then you can share these experiences and other people um, uh, yeah, become aware of that and they like it. And this post uh, from like uh, six days ago was a big, a huge success. I'm still amazed how many connections I made within the past six days. It's just amazing. So yeah, um, that's what I wanted to share with you. I hope uh, um, I could inspire you a little bit. Some of you, actually many of you I know are travelers by yourself because you come from foreign countries. I know that your university consists of, I believe, 81 different nations, which is huge. So that's great uh, to talk to people who are travelers already. And uh, yeah, if you have questions uh, for my three life lessons, my most valuable lessons, so you can now go ahead and ask the question. Thank you. Hello, Shiv. It was... Yes. Uh... Well, it was a great presentation, as, as you called as an uh, Zia bin Super. Yeah, there are a few questions. Uh, no, the student has like according to you, why is culinary tourism is important? So the question was why uh, culinary and tourism is important. Yes. Yes. Um, why is it important? Why, why why culinary and tourism is important? Uh, I can tell you why culinary is very important because people need to eat yeah everybody needs to eat and many people they don't know how to cook or they are too lazy to cook or they don't want to cook but there must be someone to cook the food for them and that's the chef so that's why even in these difficult times we are uh, living through now i still strongly believe that uh, chefs will have great opportunities in the future like i said because they uh, are preparing the food for these people who don't want to cook or who can who don't know what to cook and uh, regarding in regards to tourism yeah um i still believe that um people love to travel and like to travel and sooner or later uh, the tourism industry uh, will be bouncing back so for uh, for the future trend i would not dismiss the tourism industry it is taking a big hit right now, as we all know, unfortunately, but uh, in the long run, in the long term, I see definitely demand. Thank you, Shiv. It was a uh, nice, uh, no, on the informative on culinary tourism. And there's another question by one of our students, like what are the challenges that you will be facing in traveling around the world? Challenges, okay. What challenges I would face? Definitely, of course, the the, uh, the higher sec security and safety measurements, uh, which we are experiencing now, is certainly uh, on the one side uh, something good because people feel more safe. 
and they want to feel safe and airlines and hotels, especially restaurants, they need to provide with these measurements. But on the other side, I know from many colleagues of mine that um, these restrictions, because of these restrictions, uh, people stay away from traveling. They are afraid of traveling. They stay away from restaurants, uh, from uh, traveling. So the entire industry is suffering. These are the challenges. And um, it just will take time to, uh, it, it, it will take a tremendous amount of time, I believe, until we reach a decent level of uh, demand and supply. Um, the restaurants here in Germany are suffering because they are closed at the moment. Even people want to eat. They cannot spend the money. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, a, um, it's not an easy problem. Yeah. Thank you, Shifta. Other question from one of our students. Like, what are your, uh, what are your perceptions about your various uh, cuisines around the world? The Since you have traveled across uh, many uh, countries, so what is your perception about the cuisines? Okay, the question was, what, are my, what is my perception of the different cuisines? So I assume the, the student wants to know um, what my, probably what my favorite food is or what I think of different cuisines. Um, you know, as a chef, like I said in my, in my talk, you want to be open-minded and uh, yeah, you know, experiencing all these different ingredients and different cuisines and recipes is something I always, always liked. So I tried to always keep my mind open, you know, to perceive as much as I can. And of course, there are cuisines which I don't like so much. Uh, for example, Japanese cuisine is not so much my thing because I'm not so much into sushi, for example. But it does not mean that I look down onto Japanese cuisine. It would be actually stupid to do that because remember, you have to keep an open mind. Uh, I can tell you uh, that I love Indian cuisine, for example. And only when you look onto Indian, Indian cuisine, the subcontinent is so huge. I mean, you can spend 10 lifetimes and you haven't not even experienced all the different uh, cuisines over there. So. And this is how I uh, uh, keep my perception open. I perceive every style of cuisine as something new and interesting and uh, uh, valuable on, this, on the same level. It's very important that you keep this attitude as a chef, regardless what your taste is. Chef uh, Danka, there's another uh, question one of our students want to ask, like uh, what are the opportunities for students around the globe in the culinary and tourism? The question was, what are the opportunities for, for students in the, in the culinary and hotel industry? Uh, the, the opportunities are great. Um, okay, despite the fact that now we are experiencing a, uh, a heavy crisis and that uh, especially the tourism industry is suffering now. But uh, I also said already that uh, sooner or later, people want to travel and they will do it. So opportunities are still there. Um, hotels will be reopening, new hotels are going to be built, so uh, don't shy away from taking up culinary classes, visiting culinary schools, hotel management schools, people will be needed in the future, the travel industry is coming back, maybe not so much on a large scale, this is what I probably also can, can tell you from my experience, but uh, everything will be probably happening, happening on a more high class level, but I cannot predict anything. But like I say, the opportunities are great. And I think, especially in these times, if you manage to probably specialize yourself in something, then you even have higher and better chances to land a, a, a well-paid job. Because I think in the future, jobs in the culinary and in the hotel industry in general, um, is uh, the trend is going to be that uh, mm, people with more specialized knowledge and skills are sought after. So if you keep this in mind today and prepare yourself accordingly, then you might have great chances to be uh, selected in the future for a, a, a good job. Danka, like you have other question to one of my uh, students, like what are the status of hospitality exactly now? Because now after the pandemic, since all of this, uh, this vaccine has come out, and there's a situation is little, you know, it's overcoming. So what is your thought about that? 
So the question is, what are my thoughts about the current status of the hospitality industry? Yeah, of course, very sad, you know, uh, through, uh, I have a great network of people around the world and most of them are now without job. Yeah, unfortunately, they have been laid off, the hotels had to shut down, they are locked down or uh, went bankrupt already. And um, what I try to um, tell, also first and foremost myself, but also my friends and colleagues is not to give up. And uh, I try to tell them what I just said the question before, that the hospitality will, will bounce back, but we don't know how successful it will be coming, it will be happening, but we also don't know which year. But what definitely will be happening is the industry will be being reduced. Yeah, it's not so much mass tourism, it will be more specialized, more, more boutique, more high class. But you know, if you run a boutique hotel or a high class hotel, then you need stuff, you need skilled people. You cannot just bring somebody there who never had a degree or no experience. You need skilled people, people with valuable experience. And these people also will be paid high, uh, better money. You know, this is what's, what I think is going to happen. So the current state is very depressing, but there's no reason to give up because um, like I say, uh, if you can anticipate the future somehow and then you can prepare yourself accordingly and that should push you into the positive corner. It should make you optimistic. It should make you enthusiastic uh, at least a, a bit more to get a positive mindset and a positive outlook. Yeah, um, This is the situation at the moment, but for me, and that's why I say also, when I speak to you guys, I also speak to myself because I also have to motivate myself. You know, I'm also without a job right now. I have no job. So I'm also suffering. Uh, the good news is that I managed to secure a, a new job, uh, which I will start probably uh, in the next few weeks. But for the past few months, I also was without job. I was the same affected like you. And I try to just keep um, following my own advice. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I can share at the moment here. So. Thank you, Chef. Uh, as you say, like Danka in, uh, in Deutsch. So it's all about the questions. It was in a well presentation. So I go to my friend Ranganath. Yeah, thank you very much for, for hosting me. Uh, it was nice talking to you. Nice to get to know you. And I was uh, invited <laughs> already, actually, by your professor. So uh, seriously, uh, if I have the chance, and India is still on my list, it's the only, the, one of the countries I never traveled to. So, uh, and uh, I will make it happen as soon as I have the, pos the possibility. Of course. Yeah, on your next travel, uh, I think uh, you need to visit India. 100%. And I visit your place first. That's my promise. Sure, sure. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Uh, that was a great presentation from you. Uh, so we, it was quite informative and quite inspiring to all of us and for all the students who are listening. Uh, so I thank you. And thank you, sir. You can.